Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Update webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst uh, here at CMC Markets. Today's date is Monday the 8th of January. Um, uh, today's date is Monday the 8th of January um, and this is our Monday weekly webinar. Uh, what, we'll, what we'll be going through as, as usual is the risk warnings. I'll leave the risk warnings here on screen for you guys to read. Uh, it essentially states that any, any topics that are covered here on the webinar are uh, my comments and my views, uh, not to be con or my, these are my own personal comments and views, not to be construed as any explicit investment or trading advice. Uh, it's very standard practice uh, for our webinars here. So have a quick read through of those, of those, those slides and we, we then proceed with the webinar itself. Um, so the usual format for the webinar is I'll go to the risk warnings, I'll talk about what's, what's been going on in the news, I'll have a quick look at the economic calendar to see what lies ahead and then the bulk of the webinar will be spent looking at the major markets, uh, indices, a couple of big indices, a few of the big commodities, a few of the big uh, currency pairs and any, any recommendations that you guys might have, have market wise have a look at those uh, and then we'll wrap up the webinar itself. Uh, so what's been going to be going on in the news over the over the, uh, the weekend? Well, essentially, uh, equity markets are, sort of, are are still in the kind of global equity markets are still in a very positive run that they have been in. Uh, we, we've seen a, a strong, we've seen, obviously seen in America, we've seen quite a decent run in U.S. equity markets. It seemed like deja vu, to be honest, uh, between record highs on the Dow, the S&P, and the Dow Jones. Uh, we had a reasonably good, okay, fairly good non-farm payrolls report last Friday. The headline figure was a considerable miss. Uh, we're expecting 190,000 jobs to have been added in December. Only 148,000 jobs were added. But guess what? The November number was raised higher uh, from 228,000 to 252,000. So nice enough um, move higher on the revision. Unemployment remained unchanged at 4.1% being expectations. Average earnings, which is a kind of a kind of key detail, uh, that, that on a monthly basis rose by 0.3% um, in line with expectations and an increase on the previous rating of 0.2% and on an annual basis average earnings uh, remained unchanged and came in line, in line with expectations of 2.5%. So positive sentiment in global equities has seen the FTSE here in, in London, the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 200 both ratchet up record highs today. Even though we have come back a bit uh, on the London market, we still managed to, on the, on the FTSE 100, we still managed to eke out a fresh record high. France and Germany both posted month, both posted multi-month highs. Uh, so sentiment in, in the Eurozone is quite strong as well. We did see at the back in the last week, yes, CPI in the Eurozone uh, ticked down ever so slightly. And which is a bit odd considering a lot of the economic indicators of the Eurozone have been quite positive, uh, particularly say France and Germany, the real powerhouses of the Eurozone. But the tick down in inflation and the cost of living, uh, that is something that, that's going to worry Mario Draghi, the head of the ECB. He's often kind of complained about low inflation or, or sluggish inflation in the region, which is yes, weak demand. And if Mr. Draghi feels that demand isn't high, he's li more likely to keep the uh, bond buying scheme in place. Now Now that we're in 2018, the monthly bond buying scheme by the ECB has got to be reduced down to only 30 billion euros a month and that's going to run until September this year but Mr Draghi has constantly and consistently left the door open to either an extension of that easing program or perhaps even a beefing up of the monthly bond buying size should he feel it's required and, uh, and I think inflation is, an, is, a, is a particularly important indicator that Mr Draghi keeps an eye out for. So we've also seen a fairly uh, decent start at least in the, in the morning time, at least at 8 in the morning uh, for the Eurozone equity market. So let's have a quick look at what's, what is on the week ahead in terms of um, economic indicators. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the trading platform under Market Pulse scroll down fourth option down market calendar and it gives you the breakdown of the various different economic indicators that we've had out so first off the bat we noticed this morning manufacturing orders in germany on a month-to-month -month basis declined by 0.4 percent the forecast was from a rise of 0.5 percent and the previous rating was a rise of 0.5 percent how is price in the uk uh, on a month-to-month -month basis according to halifax dipped by 0.6 percent you're expecting a reading, an increase of 0.2, and the previous uh, reading was an increase of 0.5. So 
this is the, the format. It'll give you the actual once it's out. I'll show you the forecast, the expected, and I'll also show show you uh, what was previously uh, what was the previous report was. To be honest with you, it's a relatively quiet week. Uh, there isn't a whole lot going on, but the same in terms of actual uh, economic announcements. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the actual economic index that, that, that the markets won't be interesting. So take a look to tomorrow. We have building approvals out from Australia, so anyone trading the Aussie dollar needs to keep an eye on that. We have German industrial production uh, early doors tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. We also have German trade data out at the same time. Later on in the morning, we have French trade figures coming out. And then we have, have the Eurozone unemployment rate, which is tipped to fall to 8.7%, down from 8.8%. Uh, looking ahead to Wednesday, uh, we have this is the first kind of big day of Chinese news. Uh, on Wednesday, on the early hours of Wednesday morning, we have Chinese CPI and Chinese PPI. Uh, we're expecting that the inflation rate to tick up to 1.9% from 1.7, which is a fairly sizable move. But uh, at the same time, we're expecting PPI, which kind of measures, measures the, more, the producer price index, which measures uh, more in relation to cost of materials and inputs for the factory side of things, the industrial side of the economy, actually to fall to 4.8%. Any indications whether the, the Chinese economy is growing or slowing? Uh, broadly speaking, it's been slowing for, uh, for the last number of years, but it's slowing. If it, gets, if it continues to slow, cool down a gear, uh, um, without actually falling off the cliff. I don't think traders are going to be too worried. Uh, later on Wednesday morning, we have manufacturing output and, and, and industrial output from the UK. And then, as always, uh, as always, every Wednesday, we have the oil and energy figures coming out. So, and we're trading, uh, trading the energy markets, the oil markets, needs to keep an eye out for the oil figures. Looking ahead to Thursday, okay, it's a relatively quiet uh, session on Thursday. I suppose the biggest one to keep an eye out for is going to be Industrial production from the eurozone, then followed by jobless claims in the United States, uh, and then we also have Japanese trade figures out very late on Thursday night. And on Friday, we have numbers coming out from China again. Uh, trade figures out from China. So anyone trading the mining companies or high-grade copper needs to keep an eye on these because even though we're talking about the actual um, percentage terms of imports and exports and, and the value of the trade, traders like to break that down into the imports and the exports component. If they're importing a lot of if imports are quite strong, you could see a push higher in mining companies like Rio Tinto, Vichy, Billiton, and so on. Uh, so it's a good barometer of, of how kind of mineral hungry uh, China is. Uh, scrolling down for the rest of the day, we have CPI numbers coming out of, uh, of Spain. Um, later on in, in the trading session, we have industrial production numbers coming out of Italy. And then also we have retail sales and CPI coming out of the United States uh, around lunchtime on Friday. So that, that's sort of the, kind of the, the major highlights of the week ahead of us. As you can tell, it isn't really the, going to be the busiest week ahead of us. But nonetheless, let's have a look at the markets now. So I'll, I'll run through the major indices, a few commodities, and a few currency pairs. And if there's any markets that I haven't covered, but you want me to cover, feel free to enter into the chat, into the chat box. What you like me to like me to, like me to have a look at? So the FTSE 100 has been in a fairly solid upward trend since late November. Um, what we can see here is the market. So since early December, rather for the last month, or so uh, we, we've managed to push higher. We had a quite a decisive break north of the uh, of the previous all-time high here, and it's been pushing higher ever since. So the trend is clearly to the upside, and the sentiment is clearly bullish. What this ever so slightly concerning though, um, prices is, is the most important indicator out there. Uh, everything else comes secondary. So if the price is hitting all, hitting all time high, that's kind of is that's probably the, the one to keep an eye out for rather than anything else. But I will say this: as the market is pushing higher and in a fairly steady and quite a, an aggressive upward trend, we will notice how the market's creating all time highs here. But if you look at the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, we can see. The rate of positive momentum is actually in decline. So positive momentum is falling. So while the bulls are driving the price higher and higher, fresh all-time highs, we're not seeing higher highs on the MACD indicator. So if you have a divergence between the two, it would suggest that buying pressure is running out of steam. So the bulls and the buyers are running out of steam. So we could see a bit of a pullback in the FTSE 100. And over the last few few months, over the last five or six weeks, the market's been pushing higher. Buying on the dip has been a popular strategy, so if we do see any moves to the south in the FTSE 100, we could expect to find support coming to play in around last Thursday's low, in around 7,670, or perhaps even down to 7,640. 
these are areas we could potentially see that the, the FTSE pull back to. But the overall trend for the last month has been has been to the upside, so it's more than likely that the that upward trend is going to continue. And if that is if that, if that does continue, we could see head up towards seven thousand eight hundred, nine thousand seven thousand nine hundred, and then of course the big eight thousand would then be on the radar. As I mentioned at the top of the webinar, we we have seen multi-month highs on the Germany thirty, the DAX. So not too, uh, I had a late burst uh, in, uh, in in late 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 December, early January. Market has moved consistently higher here. It's broadly speaking been trading in a range bound uh, for uh, about five or six weeks now. I think in kind of mid November up until New Year itself, it's been largely kind of trapped within this range of say thirteen thousand three hundred down to around twelve thousand eight hundred. So about a five hundred point range. Now that we finally kind of broken out of that. It could be in, could be a sign that we're actually going to snap out of that, and we're looking to kind of test the uh, the all-time highs which were achieved in November. As the market was pushing higher here, you can notice how on the MACD indicator where you can see how the the momentum swung from in the red from being in, from being in negative territory to positive ter territory. So as the market's moving higher, we're seeing a gain in positive momentum. So the 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 momentum momentum the direction. The change in the momentum confirms the price. We, we can be more confident that this upward move is going to last. So, if you continue to push on higher, we could be looking at the target, the all-time high of 13,534, and then beyond that, traders will be looking towards 13,600, 700, 800, so on and so forth. If you do manage to kind of dip, dip again on the DAX, we could look to kind of find support in around the 13,200 price in around here. Or maybe even down um, at this price action here of of um, 13,430, which is the 50-day moving average. And notice how the 50-day moving average previously acted as a bit of resistance here in late December as the market was pushing higher. So, and it has quite a bit of form uh, trading in or around the 50-day moving average uh, from November and December as well. So. If it, the more kind of form it has in the past, the more likely it is to, to act again uh, to be a crucial uh, crucial price point in the future. Uh, but if the market does make a decisive break south of the 50-day moving average, we could be looking at heading back down towards the January low, uh, which, which comes into play down around the 12,750 region. Take a look now at what's going on in France with the CAC 40. Similar deal, similar move here where the, frac, where the, where the CAC was range bound uh, from around say 4,000, sorry 5,430 down to around say 5,260. It was trapped in that range for a number of weeks. Now we've managed to make a fairly decent kind of and decisive move out of it. Notice how when it pushed higher, it really smashed above. It really, it, it really accelerated beyond the uh, the, the mid December highs of this pr price here, 5,000. 413 ish has made a decisive break north of that. It's got the all time highs of say 5,537 just in sight, so we, it's, it's likely to continue on. It's more than likely to continue on in this upward trend. The market's pushing higher, positive momentum is quickly increasing. So we could be looking at testing 5,537 uh, in, in the coming days. And then if we go beyond that, traders, because it's Uncharted territory traders will be looking out for big psychological numbers 5,600, 700, 800, so on and so forth. So, but if you do manage to pull back on the the CAC on the CAC 40, the, the France 40, we could see support come into play in around this price area here of around 5,435. Notice on a few occasions it did act as resistance on the way up, and when it finally broke north of it. That, that area now, that resistance area, may now act as support on the way down. Similarly enough, we could see support come into play in around the 5,400 region, which roughly coincides with the 50-day moving average. And notice how we did see a lot of price consolidation uh, in around that price action uh, previously. And as, as I said, it was kind of it ran out of steam on a few occasions just as it approached the 50-day moving average. So we could see a bit of uh, price action. Um, we could see some consolidation in around that, that metric again. But if you do break south of that, the next level to watch out for to the downside will be the 2 day moving average at 5,261. Notice that the market bounced off the 2 day moving average. 
which was a considerable turnaround because it, it effectively printed a fresh multi-month low here, bounced straight off the 20 moving average and then ricocheted on to create a multi-month high. So it gives an indication of how much buying force came into, into, into effect when it hit the 200 day moving average. Uh, we'll turn our attention now to what's going on on the US indices and it is just uh, quite impressive what the American markets have been notching up over the last few weeks and months. It's been a non-stop string of, of, of um, a non-stop string of uh, record highs. So it's been a very clear, and this is a kind of classic example of an upper trend. Market moves to a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Bit of consolidation here, higher higher high yet again created. We could be looking at setting a a, f a fresh all-time high today. I think things have been, have been going. I wouldn't be surprised if you do. But seeing as we've been in a fairly obvious and consistent upward trend, buying on the dip has been the popular strategy. So if we do see a move lower in the, in the Dow Jones, we may find some, some, some support in around here, in around the 25,120 level, or maybe even down as far as the 25,000, big, big psychological number in around there. And, so, and even if we move south again, we could find support in around the lows of late December, in around the 24,700 region, or even down here. 24,535 price here. Um, I'm moving to the upside, seeing as we're, a few, seeing as we're uh, well north of 25,000, we could be looking ahead towards 25,300, 400, 500, so on and so forth. Uh, the S&P 500, it's a very similar, similar situation where it's a very string of, uh, of higher highs and higher lows and it's a solid upward trend. It's even quite. Uh, it's even more more aggressive to move higher in the S and P. So, as you can see, class example of markets going to a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Bit of sideways trading and only only to go on and create a fresh all time high. So the markets in a fairly solid, very very strong upward trend. If any kind of boost to the downside, we may find some support down around here at 2,715, 2,700 itself. Or perhaps even down to the late December low of 2,667. So all these price areas could potentially act as support should the market turn over on itself. But seeing as we're in a fairly up, solid upward trend, the market's pushing higher here. We can see a swing to positive momentum, and it's actually increasing. So you can so the, the increase in momentum confirms the increase in price. So we could be looking at heading up towards north of this 2,000. Um, 750, 760, 717, seven, 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 so on and so forth. On the flip side of the equation, what we've got uh, is what's going on in the price of gold. Uh, gold has, is a bit in the red today, but not too long ago we were at three and a half month highs. So I suspect we could be looking at a bit of consolidation period of gold or a pullback in gold before we potentially move to the next level, uh, next level higher. If you look at the price of gold over the last 12 months, from, say, from the lows of say, December last year, broadly speaking, this market has been pushing higher. And if you look at the price action since mid to late December, this Wednesday the 13th, this, this chart, this, this bar here, is from the Federal Reserve hike rates and they left their, their outlook for the 2018 unchanged. That, of course, um, is going to be, in my, that outlook may not have a very long timeline, seeing as the, the individuals that make up the Federal Reserve are going to change, and we want you to have a better clue than what the Federal Reserve are thinking until all those Fed members are announced. In the meantime, the market has been in a fairly solid upward trend since mid November. You can see here that the market started consistently with pushing higher. As it started to push higher, negative momentum started to decline. It swung into positive momentum territory, which has been pushing higher and higher. We have seen a bit of a pullback in the price. We've also seen a bit of a cooling off in the rate of uh, positive momentum. So what we could see from gold is seeing as I made a fairly decisive break north of the October high in order to create a multi-month high, a three and a half month high only last Thursday and we've pulled back ever so slightly from it since then. What we could see in gold is we could see a bit of a drift lower or a bit of a consolidate, consolidation sideways move. We could drift lower down towards 1306 which coincides with the October high or perhaps even down towards 1300 big psychological number and also co coincides with the late November high uh, before we potentially look to move higher again and if we do continue this upward trend 
that we've been in since mid of mid December, we could be looking at heading up towards 1334, which is which is a lot of a large consolidation area from uh, from September. And if we go north of 1334, bulls would then be looking towards the September high of 1358. If we do manage to have a fairly decent break south of 1300, we may even find support in around the water day moving average at 1289 or even down at the 50 moving average at 1279. Notice how both the 50 day moving average and the sorry, the water day moving average and the 50 day moving average manage to act as both support and resistance in late December. And when, when they have that kind of previous kind of track record of doing that, it makes it the more likely that they'll do it again in the future. It's only if we have a kind of a decent break south of the 30 moving average, which comes into play around 1272, could then we, we, we get worried that we could be looking that this that this upward move is turning over on itself, and then we could be heading back down towards 1236, the uh, the December low. And if we go south of 1236, we could be heading back down towards the 2017 low, um, which, which which was created in July of 1204. So the oil market now has uh, been looking quite strong recently. It's been both crude and WT, Brent crude and WTI have been in fairly solid upward trends over over the last number of months. Over the last say six months, we have seen a small bit of um, price consolidation in the last few sessions, but by and large, the markets are looking quite strong. So the trend going from July from June last year has been very very consistently to the upside. The pullbacks that we have seen have been quite aggressive, but that's the energy market for you. But the direction of the price has been very much to the upside. Um, as, I, as I said, uh, upward trends buying the dip has been a popular strategy. And seeing as we just, it would appear that we've given back a, a, a few cents or, or, or the, the guts of a dollar in this move here, we are seeing in terms of positive momentum cooling ever so slightly. So we could see a bit of a period where the market ages a bit lower before potentially moving on to create another higher high because we are at we did create fresh two and a half year highs only last week so if we do end up kind of pushing a bit lower in the price of of, uh, of uh, bread crude in the next few sessions we could be looking at getting support in around the 67 62 area here or maybe down even at 66 dollars a barrel or perhaps even down towards 65 dollars a barrel these are all areas we could potentially find buying by uh, additional buyers coming to the fold should the market move lower but it's been in a very consistent upward trend over the last six months so the next big psychological number to look out for the upside will of course be $70 per barrel WTI West Texas Intermediate has had a fairly similar looking chart in that's been gaining ground for the past six months but not, and we've had recently hit a fresh two and a half year high not only last week but at the same time, uh, we've also had a period of consolidation and the market having its ever so slight pullback. So a very similar price here, solid upward trend, a series of higher highs and higher lows. Market would have created a fresh two and a half year high here on Thursday. We traded a bit lower. As you can see, the positive momentum was steadily increasing, confirming the, the positive move in the price. And now we're seeing a slight decline in the positive momentum, just as we're seeing a slight decline in price. So the two are moving in tandem. So what we could potentially see here is maybe a drift back down towards 61 or perhaps $60 a barrel or perhaps even as low as 58.85. But as I was saying, the, the, the trade for the past six months has been to the upside. Uh, it's, 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 uh, that's so it's more like, seeing as the trend has been up for six months, it's more than likely that, 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 that it will continue. And if you do manage, you're going to keep pushing higher on the price of WTI. On the price of WTI. The next big psychological number that we'll look out for will of course be $63 a barrel and 64 and 65 to the upside. So I'll be coming on to a couple of currency, a few currency pairs before we wrap things up. Uh, any markets that I haven't covered and you would like me to cover, uh, please feel free to stick it in the chat box now because we'll be wrapping up the webinar in the next 5 or 10 minutes after I get a few of the major currency pairs out of the way. So the big picture for the euro dollar, especially from the last, from the last, uh, Come back from 2017 has been very much to the upside. The euros has had a very impressive 2017. Uh, if you look at what it what it did it, after it hit it, the price level it got to in September was the, the, the prices it hit in September and actually also fairly recently as well were not seen since late 2014. So we're talking not, not about basically three year highs for the euro versus the US dollar. 
after a, quite a positive run through the summer months, it gave back quite a bit of ground here. But then ever since uh, November, it has broadly been pushing higher. And notice how the market here ever so slightly didn't quite get there. But on Thursday last week, it just nearly got to the September high. And if you go north of, the, of that September high, we'll, we'll be looking at fresh three-year highs for the euro dollar. So that tells you kind of all you need to know about how bullish the market is about the euro versus the US dollar. So as you saw here in November, we did see a large, from September to November, we did see a bit of a pullback from the wider from the, from the several months of gains previously. And now we're seeing a bit of a pullback here. So we could see potentially a drift lower, perhaps down as low, down towards 119.61, the late November high, or perhaps even down towards 119 because psychological number. And also we have quite a bit of price consolidation in around the 119 area. And even if you go south of 119, we may even find support from, from the from the move from the 150 day moving averages in around the 118.27 or probably even the 118 mark itself because notice how the market did manage to uh, act as a bit of support and resistance in around in um in the last number of months on, on both those metrics it's only if if you if you hence if you take out the, the december low of 117.17 then you might get worried. Then, then you might be thinking that the positive trend as, um, is turning over on itself. And a move south of 117.17 could take us back down to the November low of 115.54. The pound versus the US dollar. The pound's been in a solid upward trend for the last nine months. Uh, if you draw a low from if you draw a line from the from the low of March last year through the lows of October this year, you'll see that there's, there's, a, there's been a fairly solid upward trend. This low here, draw a line to it to the October low. Now, to be fair to it, it did manage to break through the line on a few occasions in in the first few weeks of November, but it never managed to have a very decisive break. So, while it holds above this trend line here, it's likely that the upward trend in the pound versus the dollar is going to continue. And notice how here uh, on Wednesday last week we did manage to hit a fresh three and a half month high on the pound versus the US dollar. So. Gives you an indication of what of uh, what, what what market sentiment is like. So the market's been in an upward trend for nine months. We hit a three and a half month high only last month. So if we do see any kind of pullbacks, we could see some fresh buyers enter the fold. So if we do see any any pullbacks in the price of, of the pound versus the US dollar, we may find some support in around the 135 mark, or even head down towards kind of 134. And it's only in around the, the, the support line will potentially come into play in around the 13360 or 70 mark. While we, 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 we remain north of this trend line here, it's, it's likely we could see a continuation of the upper trend in, in, in cable. It's only if you can have a, have a decisive break of that trend line here, if you have a decent move south of the, of the 100 day moving average. So the, if you get down to around 132 or so, or break 132, then we could be looking at heading back down towards the kind of the 130, uh, 130 uh, 50 region, which is in around the 100, 200 day moving average. Taking a look now at what's going on with the euro versus the British pound, euro sterling. So broadly speaking, if you look at it, depends which kind of time frame you want to look at it, but since August. Euro sterling has broadly been kind of pushing lower. Uh, as I mean, as it isn't your textbook example of a lower of lower lows and lower highs. It isn't your typical example of lower lows and lower highs, but that, that's exactly what we've seen. So we have the August high here, you have the new low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. I think this this could potentially be a lower high that we're seeing before we continue on and have a move south again. That's potentially what we, what we could see. So as it ran into the resistance at the one or two moving average, I notice how we did see some trade north. We did trade north of it at one or two occasions, but nothing managed to really stick. Um, we're now pushing south here for the time being. It's getting support from the 50-day moving average because the 50-day moving average acted as support in late December. If we do have a decisive break south of the 50-day moving average, or, uh, which comes into play in around 88.55, we could then be heading look, looking towards. The Trinity moving average, which comes into play at 0 spot 88.20. And if you go south of 0 spot 88.00, then we could be looking heading back down towards the December low of 0 spot 89, sorry, 86.89, this, this, this price area here. 
and notice how as the market was pushing higher here we saw an increase in positive momentum and now as the market is looking like it's potentially turn over on itself what are we seeing here we're seeing the positive momentum slide so this is what I'm talking about whereby the market was moving higher but at the same time it was moving higher and kind of lower momentum lower energy the, 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 the the kind of the, the fury that the bulls had was kind of running out of steam so we could be looking at moving south and if we do move south we could be looking heading down towards 88 89 and if you do take off that level that will be the creation of a new lower low and then we could be headed, looking at heading back down towards 86 the figure notice how we saw a better price consolidation in late may from that area so seeing as you've you known the suggestion about what markets we're going to look at, I'm going to cover dollar yen and then show you a few things on the platform and then look to wrap up the webinar. So if you take a look at the dollar yen, if, if you look at the uh, the lows in September and look at the price action ever since then, it's been broadly been pushing higher. It's been a bit erratic, I know, but broadly speaking, since the lows in September, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Dick, it did have a the lows in November did manage to take off the lows in October, but since then the market has been pushing higher. It does appear to be very much range bound because it's finding it's struggling to get to get a say north of say one thirteen sixty, but at the same time we're getting quite decent support from the one twelve area, and now now actually that actually kind of coincides with the one day moving average. So while we remain north of one twelve. It's likely we could see uh, the, the the wider trend that's been in place since the lows of September, the positive trend to remain in place. And if you do keep pushing higher on the dollar yen, the big level to watch out for to the upside will of course will be the December high, uh, which comes to play at 113.75s. Beyond that, 114, and then beyond that, look towards 114.73, and then if you go a bit north of that, up towards 115.62. But if we do, if, but if we if we do manage to, uh, to, to have a decisive break south of 112, we could be looking heading back towards just south of 111, which comes into play at the late uh, at late November. And if you take out 111, the next big level to keep an eye out for to the downside will be 110, and then south of that from the mid-September low of 109.55. So I'll just show you a few quick things to keep an eye out for on our trading platform. <coughs> um, under the market pulse tab, you, we have the mar uh, market calendar. That's where the economic calendar is. But we also have uh, we also have the insights section. And uh, this is the second tab down. I have it displayed here. Insights is where we post econo uh, economic updates. We talk about we advertise about very different webinars and, and seminars that we have going on. We also some of the uh, some of the articles that myself and the other analysts write get posted to the insights section. So if you want to keep an eye on what's going on news wise, you can find it there. Under the chart forum. Which chart forum can be found under Market Pulse, which is the third option down. What we're doing on Chart Forum is we take a quick snapshot of a particular chart and write a few words about what's going on on that particular chart. Talk about the direction of, of the uh, price action and also comment on some key, what, what could potentially be key prices. Also, to make yourself aware in terms of news analysis, some of the news analysis we do gets posted to Insight, whereas some of it gets posted to our website. Um, there's some crossover, but not a whole, but not necessarily, not, not exclusively. And if you go here at the news analysis, give you a breakdown of the various different, most recent articles that myself and other colleagues here at CMC post from around the globe. And last but not least, I uh, just want to bring your attention to other webinars that we do have on. Uh, so th this is obviously today's one that, that you that you signed up for, and this one here uh, is a the foundations of technical analysis, uh, and it starts tonight. Um, Monday the 8th of January at 1900 GMT 7 p.m. UK time I would strongly recommend having a listen to that because as, as a person who's gotten into, gotten into technical analysis the last two years uh, I can tell you that technical analysis is actually really worth paying attention to especially if you trade markets on a short-term basis well uh, I do want to thank you for your time and your patience and for tuning in this week please tune into uh, future webinars and uh, if we're not speaking before then, have a good trading week and good luck. Thank you for your time.